Spring value days are on now at your local value home centers. Yard work is hard work, but value has the right tools for the job. Whether you want to upgrade your old grill or patio set, or you're working on your lawn or garden, this spring, do it yourself with Value Home Centers. Shop in store or online at valuehomecenters.com and get started on your next project. Value for the do it yourself in you. Urgent dental pain? Call Urgent Dental Care. 427 7777. My name is Rose. My grandson had a terrible toothache that also caused a high fever. Turns out it was an abscess. His regular dentist was closed, but Urgent Dental Care got us right in. They relieved my grandson's toothache and provided immediate care until he could see his dentist. Thank you, Urgent Dental Care. Urgent Dental Pain? Call Urgent Dental Care. 427 7777. What if I just give you the tip? Then you'll be fine. Just the tip. Oh my God. If you just give the tip, you're off high. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, morning Mess, time for another one, the After Mess Podcast. How you doing? It's Joey Boy. Hi, it's Anish. Hello, it's Gina. And it's Carla. We're just going to give you the tip right now. The After Mess. Talk about tipping. So listen, it's, it's very stupid. confusing about tipping. Uh, obviously, if you go to your restaurant, your fave, or if you go to a brand new restaurant and you tip, that's one thing. But then we got the whole thing. If you pick up the damn order, if you order, if you order it and you pick it up, the whole fucking tipping thing always gets me confused. So that's what we should be talking about right now. A uh, big shot to Anish who put me up on game. I felt very, very bad. I wasn't tipping when I was picking up. And obviously we were doing a lot of that during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then I started to. So I'll put myself on blast. But now, Anish. Uh huh. I always do. Hey, I love to always. Hear it. I drop always a couple dollars at least. Okay. I feel you on that. I I never used to tip for pickup orders pre-pandemic, and I I mean I worked as a host before, and I used to pack up the food, so I thought that's all it entailed. But now that the pandemic hit, I just feel bad for everyone. Everyone gets tips now. Yeah, I just didn't fucking get it. I was like, wait, I had to get up, drive over here, spend my gas money to pick up the goddamn thing. I didn't, I didn't have it delivered to save money, and wait, I'm still supposed to tip. So obviously, when you deliver it. I'll tip more. But if I pick it up, I'll still tip a couple dollars. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot more people that are involved if you're getting delivery or if you're getting like actual like service in a restaurant. So I think that that's something to keep in mind. But I will say like, even though Joey, we had that conversation like a few years ago mm -hmm. about like tipping when you're getting mm -hmm. takeout. Now it's gotten to the point where I'm seeing like the offer coming up everywhere. And now even I'm beginning to question like, Okay, am I supposed to tip at the Starbucks when I'm getting coffee? Am I supposed to tip when I'm at the grocery now store? Now it's getting fucking ridiculous. Now I'm about to go back to my Scrooge ass and not tip anybody because I know I hear <laughs> Gina every day. They've conned you. Was it uh, a ride share has conned you twice already? Yes, and I'm pissed as fuck about this shit because I'm trying to do the right thing. And that's tipping my driver, whether it's delivery or whether it's ride share, because I know that they don't get paid that full fare. Right. But now what they're doing is they're hitting you with two pop ups. So when I first call for my ride, it's like, would you like to tip? And I'm like, yep, here's your tip. And then after the ride's over, it will always ask me again, would you like to tip? And in tiny gray font, it says, you have already tipped this much. But sometimes you're just flying yeah. through it. And I have double tipped multiple people now to the point where it's pissed me the fuck off. Like, I... First of all, don't have money growing out my ass here. So why are you trying to get me to tip twice now? I never do that first tip. Like, would you like... I put no. I tip after the fact. Because I want to see how the service was. Yeah, you know what? I, I tipped too soon once. I was in a lift with my parents. And... They, they it had a pop up where it was like, how's the car? And I was like, oh, it's clean. He's got some good jams. You know, I'm giving him all these good things. <laughs> and then we get to where our destination was supposed to be. And it was not where the fuck we were supposed to be. And I'm looking at this man like, dude, you didn't drop us off. This is not this is not the hotel that we we're supposed to yeah. be at. He was like, oh, I think I'm like two streets below. You're supposed to be above. You just have to walk through these stairs. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? No, bitch. Like drive to the right destination because that's what I'm fucking paying. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I'm fucking paying you for. It was in my defense. It was 20 degrees outside. Like, I, no, I yeah. right. absolutely. And, and yeah. so uh, he's not wanting to move. So now my, me and my parents have to get out of the car. Had it been me by myself, I probably would not have been as pissed. But I got mama and pop. In the you car. got mama and pop. So. Now we're out of the car. He stops the ride. Even the app lets me know, are you sure that this is where the ride should end? You're not at your destination. And I'm like, bitch, I know I'm not. But I already <laughs> tipped. So I'm trying to, like, argue the tip on the app. And I'm trying to get my whole money back for the whole ride. Because he didn't drop me off where I was supposed to go. And it, like, wouldn't let me. So not only did I get charged for the ride, I tipped this man. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't understand. I don't suggest whether, whether Eugene or anyone else, don't pre-tip a rice or anything because you're tipping off the service. Right. If I go to a restaurant and the food is incredible, but their service sucks, sorry, you're going to get a less... Let's tip. Well, this is so fascinating. Uh, this was something I was going to bring up, like, just as a question, because on the flip side, I've had, like, um, like there was a guy that took me out one time, and we went to, like, a bar after we had dinner, and he gave, like, a $20 tip to the bartender, like, right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So that, w- and I had never seen that I've before. I've done that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've, I've done been, that. My dad's giving me advice yeah. on that, because guess what? They're going to come back to you quicker. Yeah. But because that's you gave interesting. Them a big tip. Mm-hmm. But that's how it works, at least in my experience with my ride shares. If I pre-tip, they're always quicker than they're supposed to be, and I just feel like I'm getting to my destination better. Also, I don't really condone this because there is this new phenomenon called um, tip baiting where you put a high tip to get them to come quickly and then you lower it afterwards. That's oh. kind of fucked up. People are doing that nowadays. But Jesus Christ. it is also nice for the consumer because in your case, Carla, they absolutely should have let you lower your tip. I know the rideshare app that I'm using, they let you. So I can say five bucks and then if it's shitty service, I can be like, nah, you ain't getting that because you were X, Y, and Z. Hmm. Interesting. I know, Interesting. but it's getting me with the double tip. So I'm... Ah. And like we don't want to sound like shitty people that don't want to tip because we do understand like the importance of the service industry and things like that. I think one of my biggest things. So I used to be a server and we made five dollars an hour, which is nothing. Yeah. And I so we survived off of tips. And I it kind of got me thinking, especially during the pandemic when restaurants were closing and they were only doing takeout and stuff. I mean, would it be better? And I don't know if it is. We can have a conversation. Would it be better for servers to not make tips at all and just make a livable wage? Is it? Right off the bat. I don't know. There's countries in the world yeah. that do That's that. That's what I was going to ask. There are countries in yeah. the world. I feel like we're on the unique spectrum of things. I think in all of Europe, that's the standard. They just get paid a normal See? wage. And that makes sense to me because, no offense, like I don't make that much money either. So to me, it's like, why am I in charge of you being able to make a living when you're already at work? Like, that's the part that's crazy to me. I don't know. Uh, opinions? Thoughts? Well, no, I get confused. <laughs> I genuinely get confused about that because that's where, like, I'm always, like, I did my most, like, work that I had done prior to this job was in food and beverage, and I was low on the totem pole, so I understood what it was like to get down on my knees yeah. and clean out <laughs> uh, underneath. Yeah, and clean out, like, the tables and, and make sure that I, I did the bitch work, and I did that for a long time, and so I... I, I empathize with that. But then when I'm starting to see like tip options for literally everything yeah, now. Like drive throughs Yeah, I'm getting concerned. <laughs> but I mean, even not food specific things. Like even if it's just Forever like. Forever 21. Yeah. Why the fuck am I tipping at Forever 21? Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Is that why would you real? tip at Forever 21? Well, I'm getting confused because it's like, so is that my, am I obliged to do that? Like, is the situation, is society in the place now where like uh, we all have to help each other out? Because I'm like, somebody is making money. And it's not us. Yeah. So what the true. hell? Who are we talking to about this? I, I see both sides of that. But me being a restaurant owner now, our top servers work off tips. They make the most money. You know why? Because they're fucking great. Like that kid, Cody. Mm-hmm. He mm. makes the most money. But he's the best server I've ever seen in Absolutely. my life. He's I, the I, best. He'd get over 20% from me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for people like him, it's like a competition. Right? If you're running a restaurant and you're basing it on tips for your workers... The best are going to get the best tips, and people that are not so great are going to get the worst tips. So to me, I kind of see that as a restaurant owner, but I'd like to see the numbers on these restaurants overseas. Like, maybe they have happier employees. Everybody works the same. Everybody makes the same. Mm -hmm. And maybe they all have Cody's working because they all get paid well. Well, I mean, it kind of sounds that way because I feel like there are... Some people, because I've seen it, who rely on the fact that you have to tip. So uh, it's the 20 percent, 18 percent is like the standard. Right. And I've seen people that do the absolute bare freaking minimum. But because they know that we're going to tip 20 percent, they 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 don't do well. They but I feel forced to still tip them like Gina, for example, with our nails. Mm. We've had shitty nails done before. There's nothing more frustrating because you're sitting there for an for- hour or two. And, yeah, and there's a very rare instance where you walk away without a cut. Usually you're getting cut as well. Yeah, so it's like we just had shitty ass service and we have to tip on top of that because we feel better that this person still took two hours out of their day to do this shitty job on me. Really? And so, I don't have that thing. I don't give a fuck if like... <laughs> you don't feel guilty? No. If you gave me shitty service or you're cutting, I didn't even know, but you're cutting me? Yeah, mm-hmm. dude. Why do you feel obliged that you got to give them 18, 20%? Society, we just, we just feel this like... 
What? Oh. It's the culture. Mm-hmm. It's the culture of a nail salon. It's I, I don't think I've... There's only been one time in my life where I walked away without tipping someone, period, at all. And that's because the dude lied to me about the technique he was going to do on my nails. And then he yelled at me in front of all the fucking customers when I asked him, like, why are my nails not sparkly like they're supposed to be? And he started screaming at me. I still paid full price. And I almost feel like a fool for doing that. Ooh, yeah. but, but, like, I was like, it's still a business. I don't know if you're the owner. You, you just might be a pissed off employee. I don't want to fuck over the owner. So I pay my bill. But I did not tip that man. He was mean. And yeah, and like I love that because there's very few times where I haven't tipped either. That's and it only it took stays with and it stays with you because I'm just like, oh my God, I feel like I'm the biggest asshole in the world. Like, even though it was like warranted, I still feel like I was a big fuck up for like not doing that. And I don't know if this were to happen again, if I wouldn't tip again. It's just so weird. And again, I go back to it's like somebody's making more money than me, and somebody should be giving these people money because I'm thinking going back to like what you're talking about, the hypothetical situation, if we have like career based like servers and yes. stuff. Yes. Those people, from what I understand, it's like you be a server for life. And it's hospitality based. Right. Be- so you have a career. Like it's like I'm choosing to be a server. This is my career, not just like this is my job to get me in and like to pay some bills for the time being. So I wonder if that would be more beneficial, like if there's somebody that's serving for like 40 years or whatever. Yeah, because in, in the service industry, like, so I'm from Napa Valley and there are some crazy restaurants there. And I remember I went to one where all the servers, they were, they were much older. They looked, God, they just, they looked professional. I felt like I had to bow to them when I walked into the damn Aww. restaurant. Like it was, <laughs> it was really cool, but they, they were so knowledgeable about everything to the point where I was like, oh, this is your career career. Like people are like fighting yeah. for these jobs at these they make really six prestigious yeah. restaurants. Yeah. And those people, that's when I think like, you know what? It should be a career. This should be something that you're focused on. It's very different to me than like Applebee's. No offense to that. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. No, well, yeah, that's a choice. That's an absolute choice. I, uh, out of all of us, you guys know I eat out a lot. I've been staying mm-hmm. and I like fine dining. It's something I treat myself to. Um, those the good servers, like at State 44, they make six figures easy. So you can make it a career and take care of your family and buy that big house and a fancy car. I know some servers, they are paid because they are great at what they do and they deserve that 25% tip. Mm-hmm. But I tip off the service. If you're shitty, I don't care about your circumstance. I work hard for my money. You know what I mean? If I work, why am I going to give you 20%? Society's not going to dictate how much I give you. I worked hard for my money. So I'm not going to fall into like, well, you know, 20% is, no, you will not get that from me. And sometimes I've had to, I'm like, hey, can I talk to you for a second? I tell him like, hey, man, we literally haven't got water. We've been here for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. What's going on? If they give me the explanation, because as, as we know, a lot of people don't want to work. Mm-hmm. They tell me, if they give me the explanation, I'm fine with it. But if they're just fucking rude, like that one spot we went to. Oh, my fuck. What yeah, the that fuck? place sucked. <laughs> The Jesus. service sucks. Oh my god! Yeah, it felt so bad. There were these bitches sitting behind. They weren't bitches. These girls. They were sitting behind us, and like they, they were just sitting there waiting and waiting <laughs> and waiting. And then eventually, they got up, kind of like in disbelief that they just never got service, mm-hmm. and left. And this one server, I, I don't know what she was doing. She may have having, may have been having an important conversation. But I saw her in the same spot for like a while, talking to another worker. And I was oh. like, it was, it I know was you were putting in our order. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that person definitely didn't deserve 18 to 20%, you know, just bad service. I reward what, what it is. Like, we can't give average radio show. Spring value days are on now at your local value home centers. Yard work is hard work, but value has the right tools for the job. Whether you want to upgrade your old grill or patio set, or you're working on your lawn or garden, this spring, do it yourself with Value Home Centers. Shop in store or online at valuehomecenters.com and get started on your next project. Value for the do it yourself in you. When you're building the focal point for a home, attention to detail isn't just a nice quality to have, it's a necessity. At AAA Timberline, their chimney, fireplace, and masonry repair and remodeling craftsmen are the best in the industry, and they're looking to add to their team. If you've developed exceptional masonry skills over the course of your career and you'd like to be paid for your talents, go to aaatimberline.com to apply. You'll earn raises based on your work and be eligible for seasonal overtime. Apply today, aaatimberline.com. 
Hey, it's Sue O'Neill. It's looking like spring out there, but with old windows, you might not be able to tell. Brighten your home and lighten your payment with new windows from Pella. Schedule your consultation by April 30th and get 50% off qualifying installations or 0% APR for 48 months, plus an additional 5% off your project. Visit PellaWNY.com. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Pella Windows and Doors of Western New York, proudly serving the Buffalo and Rochester areas for 60 years. We work, we, we, we work hard to get endorsements, to get bonuses. Like, why would we give the average? Every radio DJ should get paid the same? Absolutely fucking not. The cream of the crop should rise to the top. You know what I mean? So that's mm-hmm. how I base on the tipping. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys are right uh, the way society works that you're supposed to. Do you guys like when they put how much 20% is, 18%, 15%? Do they make it easier for you in the bottom? Yes. It helps. I love that yes. so much. Yeah, I love that. I will say like, Again, going back to like I've done several jobs where I've gotten tipped before. I cannot step my I'm sorry, dad, but I'm going to call you out for this. Like my <laughs> dad will always like he doesn't tip. He always asks like he'll always if we ever yeah. go out somewhere, like he'll always ask like me and my sister, like how much should I tip? Same. And, right. And so we'll tell him. And um, but I what I don't like is he'll try to round his dollar. So then it'll be like a tip of five dollars and eighty six cents or something. Like, <laughs> don't do oh that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I had a dude. He was? I had a dude. Oh, Wait, what? Like, like, do you know? OK, so like, let's say your total bill was seven dollars and 14 cents. Right. And he wants to tip. He will, instead of tipping like just $5 even, he'll do $5.86 so that it evens out the total for him. (laughs) But then the server is carrying, I remember carrying around so much change because I was like, oh my God, everybody's trying to round up and I get it. it. (laughs) I'll take the money. Like totally. It's not like, how dare you? But that always used to be so annoying to me because I was like, I'm that annoying person. I do that. Do you? you? (laughs) For for the kids. Oh. For the math? Teaching a math like Cruz, who's, again, if I get... Cruz tested. I know he's going to test older than seven years old. He likes helping fill out the bill. So I'll like, all right, well, this is $30 and 45 cents. What's the tip? And how mm. much is this? And I have him figure it out. And it's kind of like we do homework right there, but he loves doing it. And I always tell him how to round up and stuff like that. I don't so, do that, but with my kids, I do. Okay. The reason Sorry. that I don't like to round up to make it an even number is because that's how I know when the bar is fucking me over. So, like, let's say the shots were $4.62 per shot, right? And I bought one shot, and I wanted to tip him 2 bucks. So the total would be $6.42 for that, right, uh, on my statement. So whenever I see bar statements that are even, like $10, $14, like, exactly, I'm always like, these motherfuckers put in the tip that they wanted to. And most of the time, there's not really much that I can do. But that's when I know I'm like, oh, you put in your own fucking amount of money that you wanted. And that's shady to me because I know that I never leave it even. It's like a thing for me. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. You know that thing, the fucking oh. guilt that you get, like, hey, do you want to round up to the, the rest of your change? I always to say go? no. I fucking hate that. No. Especially when people are around, you know, we're ra- radio personalities. Mm-hmm. And if someone recognizes you, they're in a yep. fucking line or anywhere, and they're like, you want to round up for the children? So I'm like, fuck. No. That's the one thing that never gets me. Sure. No, it never gets me either, because <laughs> guess what? We we all here have donated to charity before on our own accord, where we can make sure that whatever we're donating is going fully to that foundation. When a store asks you to round up a dollar, when they give that charitable donation that you're paying for, they get the tax break for it. And I'm like, fuck that shit. If they wanted to donate their own money, then they can donate their own money. When I donate a dollar to the Children's Miracle Foundation, then I can get the tax break for it because it's my money. There you go, Joey. So yeah. I always say no. I don't. Yeah, you don't. Even okay. if it makes me look really bad. But it's weird because, see, you feel bad at those, but then I feel bad at, like, the mm-hmm. restaurant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel bad because, literally, you're in front of fucking people, and they're telling you, and the lady in front of you just did it. <laughs> and then, like, hey, Joey boy, what, hey, man, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Hey, would you like to... You there's, know what I mean? There's children that are dying right now. Yeah. Would you like to round Be up like, your total crazy. so that you can help one of them survive? Exactly. It's very like that. It's like, you know what? If I look good in front of these listeners for 37 cents, sure. I'm definitely not going to tip you an extra 10, 15 fucking dollars because society t- thinks that I should be tipping that. Fuck that. Dude, one time I went to I went to the store and they were like, would you like to round up for whatever foundation? I said no. And the lady was like, are you sure? And I looked at her and I said, no, I'm sure. Bitch, are and you she dying? was like, she was like, it's only it's only a dollar. And I was like, no. And she was like, 
last chance to donate. And I was oh like, bitch, my God. I no, well, you're making me not want to buy this shit now. Like, I will leave. Well, because you know that they're that's part of their job performance. Like, this is part of that stuff that makes it feel. It always makes me feel so weird about all these things because I know that those people that are working there are going to get like counted on or counted against them for how many of those donations. So they get a little got. bonus. Either that or, or they're they just going to get like a good job review or they're going oh. to get reprimanded. Yeah. So then uh, there's like a whole so other. Like a bonus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How do, y'all, how do y'all feel about, because now this is all bringing like memories back. How do y'all feel about like tip share? Are we talking about that where you have to share your tips amongst oh. all your workers? Oh, you know what? Because I'll fuck, with fuck that. that shit. <laughs> I'll fuck with that That's all. when I got fucked over on tips. Yeah. Oh my God. It's That's so tough because I don't. So then I don't know a lot about restaurant culture because the furthest I got was just hostess and then I dipped out. Do the servers actually tip their busboys or does that not happen? Because then it's like that's kind of fucked up. I feel like the busboy deserves a tip as well. Yeah. Well, you know, as far as tip sharing goes. Here's the thing with that. I think that they should be paying like the like the busters and the hosts a certain amount of money just on their own. Like they should be making just what they should be making because I know I not, did as a host. Yeah, because they're not providing like the the service that the servers are providing. But then it also does make me think back to like when I was a shot girl, we had to split our tips with the bar back and the bartenders and the security guards and like literally every fucking buddy at the goddamn club. And I was like, bro, <laughs> why am I here? Like yeah. security guards should be making their security guard money and that's it. And like everybody should be making their own. You want to make it depends tips? who yes, you work with. It just depends. Like. Are they being honest? Are you are you stashing mm-hmm. some of that tip? Are you paying out like you should? Oh, and I knew girls were stashing their... Yeah. Aww. Oh, everybody did. That's yeah. what did that. That was well, my first job ever. Yeah. My first job ever. That's where I learned that. I was the busboy. And like, um, I was only coming back. Like, I was working at a really nice hotel. And the bartenders were always, like, really nice to me. And it was, if it wasn't for my friend who got me the job in the first place, she was like, Tyler over there is literally fucking you over. Like, he's walking out of here with a couple grand. And how much money did you get from the tips? And I was like, I got twenty dollars. She was like, That's not yeah okay. Damn. You know why? Because That's not okay. You yeah, were a bus that. boy. Yeah. You were getting fucked, and all of a sudden, your mm-hmm. server, you're like, Oh, it's my turn. Fuck that. I'm not paying the bus. Boy. Right. It's a it's right. a vicious cycle. It really is. It really is. You're like, I've been fucked over for those past year until I got to serve. Now, like, fuck that. I didn't get I paid don't like out. That. Yeah, oh, I don't like. Okay, that. Okay, I don't know if you guys have ever done like server training where you're following a server around the restaurant, but you don't get paid any tips for that day, but you're doing everything that they tell you to do. That shit used to piss me off because I'd be like, I just did all this work and you're not even going to give me $10? Really? <laughs> and really, I look Jacob? at producer Angie. We went to producer Angie's spot and she had someone in training at her spot. Did you tip her out? I paid for her drinks that night. He's paid for her <laughs> drinks that night. There we go. <laughs> in a form of. There you go. You got a tip. Yeah, it's very, the whole tipping thing is, is getting crazy, mm-hmm. man. It was so simple back in the days. I feel like it's so difficult of like, fuck, you, you tip off good service. Or bad service. That that is what your tip is. Why did I only get a little? Because you fucking sucked. Yeah. What are you talking about? Now it's just there's it's, so many different rules. It's different because I mean, like money is just way weirder now. Yeah. Like the, the we've talked about on the show, the inflation and everything, yeah. and people's wages are not like equivalent to like the way that things are inflating in society. Yeah. And then I also think about I I could go off like in a million different. So I'm just gonna like stop here. But I think about how so much of our life is going into like a subscription based like model. God. Like how everything like they're talking like Apple like the rumor is is that they're gonna start doing like a subscription for you to rent like your phones and that's how all phones are going to be. And like we already have streaming services and music like that. So I kind of wonder like is there something that we could do like that in the food world or could we come up with like a standard price just to pay people i don't know i would just like a food pass and you just walk in you're like i got my pass and then you can have like an entree yeah and like not have to worry because i would love to live in a world personally where i didn't have to worry about tipping and that i felt comfortable with everybody's wages and everything was good like just like okay great yeah this fucking amazon go thing that we go through oh oh my god i'm addicted to that shit i know you're fucking kidding me i'm going there all the time now and i just go walk in i feel like i'm robbing the place (laughs) yeah walk out whatever the fuck i want like hey you'll never catch me alive copper what's what's amazon go (laughs) what's that what's amazon go it's kind of like it's like kind of going to circle k and there's no cashiers or anything and you pick what you want and you just walk out Mm -hmm. and you have to you have to scan your amazon uh code 
And, and when you walk in, you. and then you just, it tracks what you get, and you walk out. You don't have to deal with cashiers. It's the weirdest, <laughs> mind-blowing shit ever, and I fucking love it. It's a little creepy. I love it, too, but it is a little creepy because it'll be like, you were in the store for seven minutes and yeah! 28 seconds, and I you walked down this aisle, and I'm like, how <laughs> the yeah. hell so do you awesome, know though. that? And it's not completely accurate, because I got charged for an extra burrito last time I went, and I was like... I never got the burrito. Yeah, well, you, you <laughs> should be fuck? checking what you... When, <laughs> yeah. you, when it happened to you, I checked my shit. I'm like, oh. I got the I, money back, so it did? wasn't a big deal. But right. I was just like, hmm, how many people do they get like this every once in a uh, while? I fucking love it. I guess what we have to say is we hate fucking people. Because <laughs> there wasn't people. You don't have to tip nobody. Just do well, it yourself. Fuck. I think this would be such an interesting conversation to have with somebody outside of the United States. Because if there's one thing that I know about America that... The whole world thinks about us that we don't realize. We are such a consumer-based country. Everything we do is based on what we're buying and what we're making, and it's to buy more, 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 more. Like, we just love to buy shit here. We, Absolutely. More than, like, a bunch of other countries in the world. So I wonder what they what their thoughts would be on just how we use our money. <laughs> I, that would be really interesting. Mm-hmm. It would. If you're listening from a country <laughs> that's not the United States of America, please contact us. We would love to talk to you. Please. Yeah. Tell what's, us how what's our good... Gmail? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Uh, uh, the Morning Mess. Oh, Morning Mess at B96.com. You can email us. Oh, yeah. There please. you go. Please let us know how to yeah. spend our money. Or hit us up on Instagram at The Morning Mess. But yeah, let us know. We'd love to hear. Because I know that we do have listeners, like consistent listeners outside of America. I don't mm-hmm. know how many, but mm-hmm. we do have them. If you're enjoying the podcast, you could tip us as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. The Venmo at Nish. Oh, wait. Oh, no, we're not allowed to do that. Don't do that. Wait, wait. Okay, super quick. And then uh, I know the podcast, we've got to go to a meeting. But I used to have my Venmo on my bio on Instagram. <laughs> and people would randomly send me money until one time this guy was like, you know, that's a red flag, right? And I was like, a red flag? All I have is my Venmo on my like bio. And he's like, for people to just send you money for what? And I'm like, listen, if these people want to send me money for nothing... Who the fuck am I to deny them the the pleasure? <laughs> I did that on Instagram, uh, and I did it as a joke at first. Like, let me get this fucking straight. Women are just putting their cash app thing, and people send them money. All right. And I put my cash app on mm-hmm. fucking Instagram. I forgot how much I made, but people just started sending me fucking money. I forgot, too. We did, we did like a social yeah. experiment, and yeah, you got paid. I got paid a lot. Of yes. People were just like, it's $25, $20, yes. $5, $5, $5. I'm like, what the fuck? If I only had a vagina, this would be awesome. This is crazy. Well, Just put it give and there. takes with those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, yeah, I forgot how much I made, but I'm like, oh, that shit really does work. I'll pull mine back. <laughs> Girl. Can people request money from you and like take money? They can request it, but you, you don't got to accept it. I know it's way easier to do that on Cash App, so I don't fuck with it like that. Okay. But that's what I get scared about is like, can people just like, I don't know what my settings are if they auto request. Nah, you'll be fine. All right, we up out, man. We got meetings to attend to. Uh, We'll see you on the next episode. We'll see you back on the radio. Bye. Spring value days are on now at your local value home centers. Yard work is hard work, but value has the right tools for the job. Whether you want to upgrade your old grill or patio set, or you're working on your lawn or garden, this spring, do it yourself with value home centers. Shop in-store or online at valuehomecenters.com and get started on your next project. Value for the do-it-yourselfer. Hey, David Bellavia here. It's tax season, and hopefully that means you've got some money coming back to you. And if you do, why not spend it on something that will last a lifetime? Bath Fitter Buffalo can transform your bath in just one day. And they fit your busy schedule and your budget. And best of all, everything is custom made to fit your tub or shower and comes with a lifetime guarantee. That's a pretty long time. Call 242-8999 to book your free consultation and get up to $1,000 off or no interest financing until 2027.